So this is why I got a copyright strike on my YouTube channel. What it means, I'm canceling my next two streams, by the way, and why I'm not going to try to sue Joel Osteen or his church over the issue. Um, I'm also going to share a personal message, a personal message to Joel Osteen at the end of this video, and I hope that he has a chance to listen to it and just think about what I have to share with him. So here's a quick update just to catch people up. They may not really know about kind of the issues that have been happening around my channel and around this video I made. So on, on November 3rd, I made a video about Joel Osteen uh, evaluating his teachings. My goal was to kind of like explain his teaching methodology so that people could better understand what was happening with his teachings, not just to criticize. In fact, I was intending to champion whenever he made a good point and point out and explain the problems with whenever there was something that was a problem. The video was called a, Analyzing a Typical Joel Osteen Sermon. And within a few days of that video going up live in November, it was immediately copyright you know, claimed by Lakewood Church. And they claimed it, but only asked for the money. They, they asked for all the ad revenue that would come in through the video. And I, I, I didn't care. I thought that was funny, actually. <laughs> and I don't really care that much. So that was fine. Um, about four months later, though, the video had accrued about 700,000 views. It was doing really well. And lots of people were saying, thank you, thank you. This has really helped me to understand Joel Osteen's teaching. I always knew something was, you know, a little off about it. But I don't hate the guy. I just, I just needed discernment and wisdom on it. And all of a sudden, the video was taken offline. All of a sudden, their copyright claim, they didn't want the money anymore. Now they wanted it removed from the internet. And so that led to a few other things. Some more dominoes started falling. I appealed and I explained why I thought this was fair use, which is a legal term I'll explain very briefly in a minute. And they rejected my appeal. And so then I started reaching out individually. And I thought, I don't want to go through YouTube's like, like claims, back and forth features. I'd rather talk to somebody like Joel, maybe, or someone else there at Liquid Church who makes decisions like this. So I spent a really long time, and I mean like months, I think it was over a month, uh, just trying to get in contact with somebody at Liquid Church to discuss it with them. Everybody ignored me. Everybody ignored me. I mean, I was finding people on LinkedIn who worked in this just to send them messages. Everybody ignored me. I didn't get a single reply from a single person, not once. Um, I, and I even tried some, some back channels through people who know people who know people kind of thing. Um, and so at this point, I have good reason to think the following. Um, Joel Osteen is personally aware of my video. It's not just some automated status that's, that's happening. If, if it was an automated thing, you know, to take down a video that has their, their stuff on it, their copyrighted content on it, then that would have happened a few days after I uploaded it, not four months later. I think what happened is he saw the video and didn't didn't care for it. Um, I could be wrong, but that's there's, there's evidence that suggests to me that that's the case. The reason why I say this is because this means that it's this isn't going to get resolved by just having a, a chat or a conversation. Uh, those avenues towards like sort of peaceful, calm resolution don't seem like they're available. So here's why I'm going to drop it. Here's why I'm not going to go to court. I'm going to give you several reasons why I'm going to let go. <laughs> That was the name of his sermon, by the way, was Let It Go. <laughs> well, I'm going to let it go. <laughs> and um, here's the reasons why. Number one, and this is important that you know this, because I'm not trying to stir up anger at Joel Osteen. Uh, there's, there's genuine questions and genuine criticisms that I bring that we should have that are very important. But I don't want to just stir up people being mad at the guy. It's too easy when you're a public figure. I know you, people just get mad at you. People just think all sorts of things about you that often aren't true. And that's just the theme of being known. So um, you need to know this. I do not have an airtight case for what's called fair use. My legal case is not 100%. So I consulted with two different lawyers who specialize in copyright. And I asked them both, look at my video, look at his video. Tell me what you think my, my chances are of taking this case through and succeeding in court. Because it would go to federal court next is, is where we would be. And the lawyers, one said he thought 60 to 70% chance, one said he thought 70 to 80% chance of winning. So I'll say I have about a 70% uh, chance of winning. Uh, the the weak spot in my, because I do do a transforming, a transforming thing. By the way, these are the fair use issues. So fair use is run by basically like four considerations, primary considerations. It's not clear cut and dry. Everybody who thinks if you only use 30 seconds, it's okay. That's not true. If you only use 10 seconds, it's okay. That's not true. If um, fair use is like an artistic realm of law where the court looks at it and says, hey, are you 
are you um, are you trying to steal and reproduce their work? Are you are you transforming it in a unique way that it's now your own work? What what is going on? Is it criticism, which mine is? So I check most of the boxes for fair use, most of them, right? Like it's very transformative. It's for critical analysis. Fair use is a much stronger uh, thing to appeal to if you're offering criticism. Like say you're doing a review of a movie and you're criticizing that work or something like that. And so I have a good solid case in many ways, except for one. I use like 95% of his original video. I knew that this could be an Achilles heel for me. I, I didn't think it was. Like I thought in all f free, like clean conscience, I thought this is safe because I am doing this and I'm checking all the boxes of fair use. I didn't check this one as, as well as I'd like to. I use 95% approximately of his original video. So when you when you reproduce the entire work or almost the entire work, this is a red flag. And this is why my case isn't 100% or 95, it's like 70%. Um, I did this on purpose. I did this because I thought it was within fair use, but also because I thought you needed it. I thought an, an analysis of Joel Osteen, it won't click as much for people unless you show his whole video, his whole teaching is like this. Like the stuff that I'm saying is missing. It's not just missing in one moment. It's missing throughout the whole thing. The stuff I think that's being distorted, distorting of scripture and the the selfish motivations that are being given for trying to live godly for selfish reasons, seeing godliness as means of gain, that that is consistent through his whole message. So I, I felt like I needed to use the whole thing. And <clears throat> some people want to push back and say, hey, Mike, I, I want you to be a champion because we think that Lakewood Church has been uh, copyright claiming people left and right. I'm not sure how much that's been happening personally, but maybe it has. And they, they want me to like take it to court. Mike, we'll give you the resources. We'll help fund you. We'll donate. Um, I don't think that you would want to push back with a less than solid case, with a less than like 95% sure win case. Is it really worth it? Um, I, I, I'm just saying. If it was a different situation, if it was 100% purely in fair use, I might seek to push. Otherwise, let me explain the next step. It would be a long court case. This is reason number two I'm not interested in going forward. This would be a long court case. I, I'm not just filing a claim with YouTube back and forth. This is a federal court legal lawsuit is what would be the next step. That's a serious thing to step into, and I wouldn't do it casually. Number three, why I want to avoid that kind of case is because I consider the whole thing a losing situation for the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, I imagine the uh, the negative attention on Christianity with headlines or, or at least people talking about how like Pastor Mike Winger is, is suing Joel Osteen or Joel Osteen suing him, that uh, this just seems like a disaster. Like, I believe in the body of Christ. I believe in, in the kingdom of Christ. And that is so important to me um, that it makes me very hesitant. Not that there's never a time to go to court as a Christian with other Christians. There are times but we are we should all be very hesitant about doing that about when that is the right time so i'm not saying there's never a reason uh, i just don't think it's today i do consider joel osteen and many in his group to be real christians now i get a lot of flack from that i'm going to get comments right now in this video mike how could you do that um, i i think that they are now let me say joel osteen as far as i know he truly affirms the true gospel and if you pulled him aside and we're like what do you really believe about jesus he's gonna he's gonna affirm all the right and true things about the real jesus like he seems to be believing in the same jesus i am the, the the nature of how i get saved by grace through faith the idea that if you continue on in sin that you're not that you're uh, that you're outside the kingdom when he's asked tough questions by like larry king he he soft pedals but he doesn't deny he he does affirm those difficult truths he then backs off and says things like, yeah, but it's not for me to share those things. You know, I believe them, but I don't share them. So what do I do with this? When someone's public teaching isn't the same as their actual beliefs, right? I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to say, I'm going to criticize the teaching, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to call out, call him a false brother because of those things. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'd rather err on the side of grace when it comes to trying to guess at whether other people are really saved. So I treat him like a brother. Um, this makes me less inclined to drag out a court case in the eyes of the world. So I'm sure you understand that. And for any non-believers watching, like, hey, like I believe we're part of a family is the point, was what I'm saying here. As Christians, we're part of a family. We want you to be part of this family too. And even if we're having struggles or issues, I want to treat it like a brotherly dis disagreement if, if I can. So the fourth reason why I'm not going to go forward with this is this case would be a huge distraction from my focus and mission. It's already taken days and days of, of work away from the things I care about, right? The, the stuff, the mostly I just study all the time and then I produce content for you to think about and consider to learn how to think biblically about everything. This has already taken days away from that. 
me having to stop and research this and having to rewatch this and examine this and count the number of minutes in this, uh, consult with lawyers here and make a meeting here and reach out to this person here and find emails and send everybody emails <laughs> who works at Lakewood. Um, so um, I'm done, man. I, I, I consulted with uh, one lawyer who told me that this, this legal dispute would probably be countless hours over a period of many months or very possibly over a year to resolve the case, not to mention the financial issues, which I know many of you are like, Mike will donate, but you know me, I'm never going to request money from you just because you offer it. Like I, I only want to meet needs that, that we may have and beyond that pre present everything for free. So the fifth reason why I'm not going to move forward is I can make other videos on Joel Osteen, <laughs> and not just to criticize, but to provide clarity and wisdom for those who don't know how to evaluate the teachings that they see. I can make plenty of videos on that that are much more obviously within fair use. I imagine they won't them, they won't get copyright strikes. And if they do, I can I can push back more easily before, and not have to go to court, hopefully. So they won't have any leverage, in other words, if things get escalated, because it won't be like, well, there's this one little area where you might lose the case. So what does this mean for my channel then? Um, this means I can't stream for one week. A copyright strike on YouTube, you, if you get three strikes, they delete your channel. If you get one strike though, you within a 90 day period, if you get one strike, they remove your ability to live stream for seven days. That started on Tuesday. I wanted to spend a few days thinking about how I was going to share all this with you all first. But that started last Tuesday, and it goes up until the following Tuesday. Um, now for my schedule, my streaming schedule, my study and work and life schedule, that means that my my Friday stream today, June 9th is canceled. My Friday, my Monday stream, which was June 13th, the next women in ministry video that is also canceled. Other than that, I'm fine. Like I, I, I play by the rules on YouTube. I don't expect any more issues or strikes to happen. And so we'll see how it goes. Hopefully that'll be the case. But it also means that my Osteen video is gone for good. Um, I mean, it's still on my podcast because YouTube doesn't control my podcast. So it can still be found you know, through that. But you can't watch it on YouTube. And I'm not going to post links to it here because I, I feel that that might be in violation of YouTube's policies for me to be posting links to a video that they've removed. Um, so I'm not really sure about that. And I don't like I said, I try to play by the rules. But now here I have a, I have a personal message I want to share with Joel Osteen. So you guys can listen in if you like, but this is for Joel. Like, uh, Joel, I, I've reached out to you many times um, and because I can't get a hold of you and you know more than anybody else watching, you know I really have tried to get a hold of you and, re and get in contact with you um, through even people that we both know. And so uh, instead I'm going to share just an open letter for something for you to consider. I know what it's like to receive criticisms and insults online. I know what it's like that you um, have people who hate you and you are really just trying to help people all the time. Like, I understand that. And there's people who say things about you that are that are mean and it's like they don't, they depersonalize you. You're not like a real person. You just represent something and they don't like that. I don't want to do that to you. I'm not trying to do that to you. Um, one of the most frequent criticisms I got in my video response to you was that I was too nice, that I was too kind, that I, was, that I wasn't mean enough to you. <laughs> and I, I don't mind that criticism. Um, it can be hard though when you're receiving criticism from every corner from you you got how many videos a day are people making where they're criticizing you it can be hard to notice when you have criticism you should actually pay attention to it can be hard to notice when that criticism isn't more of the same but it's something substantive that might actually be worth watching now I, I know you at least watched part of my video at least I have reasons to believe that I hope that you'd watch the whole thing. I'd be happy to send it to you even if even if you keep the copyright up I would just want you to consider those things because I think that there's real significant issues that are there and I come to you uh, with love, right? For for you and for the people that you're influencing. At least that's my heart behind it. If, if I'm delusional, then so be it, but that's my intention. My concerns, they're, they're very real. My concerns are real. They're not, they're not criticisms. I'm not making fun of you. I'm not trying to make mountains out of molehills. You seek to make people feel encouraged and uplifted and that's a good thing, right? But sometimes... If that's your only thing, if that's your whole thing, if, if all I do is seek to uplift and encourage, then it can actually be cruel to you because I might be giving people the kind of encouragement that they went, you know, a type of encouragement or uplifting when they really need to be brought down or be told something hard. So you want to encourage people, you feel called, according to your words, you say you feel called to, to, to just give out the good news, right? In your version of good news, right? Where you filter biblical truth and you only share the encouraging parts. So you know what it, the Bible says about particular sins, but you don't really talk about that. You just talk about encouraging stuff. So you're filtering the Bible. You're telling people about good things that will head their way, right? There's going to be good things in this life that they'll experience. You even make sure to teach people that the motive, and this is key. This is one thing I brought out in my video.
the motive for why they do good things is so they can personally benefit and enjoy various kinds of prosperity in this world right now. There's a problem with that because what you've done is you've, you've filtered biblical truth. There's two things. You filtered biblical truth so that you're only sharing part of the message. Now, anytime we have like a, say someone gives you a document and they cut out half of the content, you, you know you're getting a distorted version of those things. So that, that's, that's a pretty big deal. Like you'll acknowledge this even when you're, when you're talking about, uh, in, say, an interview where, where Oprah Winfrey or someone asks you a hard question. You know, you'll, you'll say, yeah, the Bible teaches that that's a sin and I believe that. The Bible teaches Jesus is the way and I believe that. But I don't like to talk about that. It's I'm not the judge and so I'm not going to discuss those things. So you refuse to, to make those things the Bible teaches, these important things, part of your actual ministry. Do you see what's happening is what people are getting from you is something different than what they get when they actually have the word just for themselves. You acknowledge that Jesus is the only way, but you don't usually tell people those things. You don't usually want to talk about it. But you don't just filter the Bible. You also change things. Now this, I'm going to put up a video here uh, eventually, probably after my after three months and my strike goes down in case you guys try to strike me again. Um, but the, the video is going to be just where you used scripture in that particular sermon. You used it wrong in every case but one. And I mean demonstrably wrong. Like I'll show... In the video I showed and demonstrated specifically, you quote this verse, you claim this about it, but when you read it in context, it's not true. That was because you needed to take verses to, in, to bring your encouraging filtered message. So you've not only filtered out by not talking about certain things in scripture, then you take what is in scripture and you have to make it look the way your teaching looks. And it's just, it doesn't look that way naturally. I think you might consider that you're a tremendous success right? In the following and maybe the letters people send you and the encouragement they give you about the, the life change they've had, your massive following, you might consider these to be evidence that you're doing things right. I mean, but you know, biblically, that's not exactly the case. What I hope you're open to is the idea that the Bible might have correction for you, that it doesn't just have encouragement for you, that the way you teach the Bible to others, maybe you're teaching yourself that way and you're only encouraging, encouraging. And I feel that that probably is the case. You are are a very happy and uplifting guy because you only you filter what comes into your own heart and mind, but you do it to the point where you can't see proper criticisms even from scripture. If you were to preach accurately, the things that you filter out and the things that you alter in scripture, I think it would shrink your financial success. I think it would reduce the size of your church by a lot. And you might see that as a bad thing, but I, as you know, Jesus did this too. Like in many times in scripture, he took advantages of opportunities to just tell people hard teachings and many of them just left and didn't follow him afterwards. That happens multiple times. He taught hard things and made people decide whether they really wanted to follow him, not just for blessings, not just for, for benefits, but because, he, because of who he is and because he's the light, he's the truth, because he's that good, he's worthy. He didn't just speak blessings and encouragement, right? Jesus brought hard truths. In that, Joel Osteen's teaching is not like Jesus' teaching. Unlike a lot of people, I think you affirm the gospel. I, I acknowledge that and I'm happy about that, right? But um, I have the concern I have is that you don't truly teach those things from the pulpit. You edit out the negative feeling type stuff and I fear for how this impacts your listeners. Like I care about them more than I care about you in a sense because there's more of them than you and so they're a bigger deal. How many of them don't understand the fear of God or hatred of sin? Um, Maybe they see God as a means to an end. Personal health, happiness, business, success, that sort of thing. How many of your viewers, your listeners, have been driven by mostly selfish desires to, to call on the name of Christ? And is that really calling on the name of Christ? Worship is something they do to make themselves happy instead of because God is worthy. Donating money is something they do to get more money from God. As in the video I reviewed, you even talk about that. If they give and donate, that God's going to open you know, the floodgates for them. Forgiving is something that they do to get a better job opportunity to come their way. Not just to forgive because Christ forgave them. But forgive because to not forgive is to, is to bring sin uh, and judgment down upon yourself because of the grace that God has given us. How many don't love the holy and righteous God that truly exists? They love more what God might do for them in this passing life. Th these are the concerns I have. This is why I think this content is really important. This is why, Joel, I don't care about a copyright strike and a potential lawsuit. I care more about the attention being on this the video t you know, that I actually put up where your teaching is examined. And so more needs to be put out there, I think, on this. And as I have time, it's not my focus in ministry. I will put more out there for people to help them. 
how many would find in your audience would find real biblical rebuke, like biblical rebuke would find it annoying or judgmental or genuinely offensive because it's been so filtered to them that you've given them, you've only fed them sugar so they don't have a taste for other nutrients they need. I believe you've edited negative stuff out of the Bible and altered the rest of scripture to serve as encouragement for people, even when those people need rebuke and warnings. In the end, you don't have Christian teaching anymore. Exactly. You have something else, something potentially dangerous. So Joel, I wish we could talk one-on-one. -on -one. And and if you ever reach out to me, go to my website, have someone go to the web, reach out or reach out through our mutual contacts. I would be very happy to talk to you and never tell anyone about it. Just, just to have a conversation as brothers. But you've turned down that offer, so I'm presenting this as just kind of an open letter. I hope you'll consider it, Joel. Um, I'm sorry for some of the negative criticisms you receive online that are uh, just mocking and rude and cruel. But there's valid criticism. And it's not jealousy because we're upset you have a large ministry or you're reaching people or you have success we don't or something like that. That's definitely not the case. Um, it's because of your handling of scripture and the way you filter it and the way you misquote it to offer encouragement to others. And it's the long-term effect of that kind of teaching that sours people to the tough parts of the Bible that we need sometimes the most. So I, I hope you'll you'll hear me out. All right, thank you guys uh, for listening in. I'm gonna be, uh, you know, like I said, I'll be, I'll be with you in a week. I have some shorts that will be going up between now and then, but some short videos. But I will not be with you live until Friday, the, what is it, the 19th or something? Um, when I first recorded this, I misspoke. It's Friday, June 17th. That's the next live stream, and I hope to see you there. In the meantime, uh, yeah, still pushing forward with my Women in Ministry series. This is a, a side issue. This is not the focus of my ministry doing this sort of thing, but I'll do more of it, and I'll be even more careful with copyright stuff. I think I'm in fair use. I, I believe I'm in fair use, but does that mean I'll actually win in court? Eh. And is it worth it to go to court? And Not to me. Not right now. Certainly not.